Now, you, you can't turn on the TV without hearing about a new poll or open a magazine without seeing a new survey. We are obsessed with statistics, but rarely do we hear more than the headline. Well, my guest tonight is a data journalist. She spends her days working out how these numbers can tell us things about our world and ourselves. Please welcome Mona Chalabi. <laughs> welcome. So good to have you. All right. So what is a data journalist? So, my job is kind of to try to provide some context to some of the stories that are happening around us. So, if there's one particular news event, what I'm trying to do is kind of show that news event in historical perspective or in geographical perspective. And one of the things that you do is you take those statistics and put them in a way that people can take them in. I've got some graphs that you've worked on that help explain some fascinating things. This is about statistics involving religion in prison. Can you talk us through what you found? I found this data that was from a survey that asked prisoners about their faith and what you find is that certain religious groups are kind of overrepresented in prisons, like Muslims or Jewish people, which seems kind of surprising or, or maybe it's not, right? It's very difficult actually when you're looking at a spreadsheet to figure out why something is the way that it is. So is it that Muslims are being arrested at higher rates? Is it that people are converting within prison? So we just kind of published the piece as is. And as ever, readers have more answers than I do. So we got loads of emails from people who were saying, you know what, I was formerly uh, incarcerated myself and I know that people convert in prison because you get better prison meals if you get the kosher meals or the lao meals sometimes, or you, get <laughs> yeah. or you get time out of your cell to pray. And this isn't all prisoners, I'm not being completely cynical, but that helps us to understand why the data is the way that it is. So there are other benefits going on to being religiously... Uh, oriented in prison yeah. beyond just faith. Yeah, absolutely, and you don't necessarily see that when you're just looking at the spreadsheet. You need people like you to kind of explain what's going on. Something a bit more serious, orgasms. <laughs> Talk us through this. You drew this graph. I drew this, yeah. So I tried to kind of make these illustrations to, to make the numbers a little bit more accessible. Um, um, part of the importance of this, actually, is it kind of shows that actually averages can be really misleading. So if I just told you the average number of people that orgasmed uh, during their last sexual encounter, actually, that doesn't really add all of the important nuance. And when you look beyond the average, you see that there are some really important patterns here. Patterns like women don't experience orgasm as frequently as men. And then you think, oh, OK, is there something biological going on? Is there something wrong with women's bodies and then you see that actually sexual orientation makes a really big difference so we know that women who are having sex with women orgasm a higher frequency than women who are having sex with men which then leads us to question what else might be going on here yeah <laughs> it's the expertise that comes with being an owner operator yeah. <laughs> um, but so we've, we've heard a lot in recent times about bad polls we were told that polling was wrong around brexit polling was wrong around trump D do we use polls wrong? Uh, yeah, kind of. I think that actually journalists do a really bad job of communicating the inaccuracy of polling and that's partly because a lot of people don't want to hear it. It sounds kind of boring and geeky to them but it's actually really, really important. I've been told there's kind of a bit of a rotating door going on in Australia in terms of your politicians. Yeah, you've been told. Yeah. We've lived through it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And polling has played a role in that, right? Oh, more than played a role. We've, we've had a, a stream of Prime Ministers who have been removed while in office because of bad polling. And, and that polling isn't necessarily accurate whatsoever. So, for example, right, during the US presidential election, I spoke to a lot of people who said they would have wanted to have voted for Bernie Sanders, but because polling showed that he didn't necessarily stand a chance, they didn't, they didn't want to vote for him. Again, polling frequently shows that the um, incumbents, so people who are outside of office, do better than those who are in office. You just kind of have to ride some of these things out. But it turns out that the betting odds end up being more accurate than the polls that newspapers do when it comes to election. Why do you think that is? I think that's probably because journalists don't necessarily have a financial interest in analysing this stuff and analysing it and analysing it, whereas the, the betting agencies actually do, so they have, they have more rigorous um, statistical techniques than we do. Do you let statistics guide your behaviour personally? Are there any areas of your life where you just back your intuition instead? You know, like, statistically, if I walk home from a subway stop really late at night, statistically it's not that dangerous, but you know what, I still feel dangerous to do it. Honestly, I let statistics govern a lot of what I do. I have a spreadsheet for my love life that I refer to. Wait, so... hang on, what? <laughs> what? So, OK, talk me through this spreadsheet. OK, it's like, if I go on a date 
And, oh, God, this sounds so awful. I sound awesome. like a maniac. Um, <laughs> if I go on a date and I, I will look at what the guy tips, and that, to me, is very important. And this, the guy doesn't pay, by the way, for the, like, I completely pay for myself, he pays for himself. But if he doesn't tip the waiter or waitress, that goes in a column. OK, That's so if he, if he doesn't tip... <laughs> but, but what if he tips too much? There's no such thing as too much. Really? Yeah. And do you think it works? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mona is the data editor for The Guardian US. Would you please thank Mona Chalabi?